Hello everyone and welcome to Whiskey Wars and we have two Bumors today to review. We have the Bumor number no. 1 and the Bumor 10 year. Now the 10 year is a special edition uh, Bumor. Obviously it's branded in association with Aston Martin, bit of a collab there. Um, and it's a 1 litre bottling, bottled at 40%, so definitely chill filtered and coloured to get that lovely red colour. And the, the Bumor number no. 1 is a non-age stated bubble um, that's only been aged in first fill bourbon casks. So um, that classic, if, if you've had bubble before, you will associate it with this really intense, rich fruitiness. That won't be present on the bubble number one. So these are the two youngest bubbles that I've found, certainly. And they both give a very different experience to the 12, 15 and 18 year that I've reviewed on the channel. Okay, so straight away, you can see that colour difference that I mentioned with the Bamor number one being very light, almost like a sun glow colour. And the Bamor number one, uh, the Bamor 10 year, you can see that uh, rich sherry sweetness coming through on the colour but don't be don't be too influenced by the colour because they're definitely both coloured very interesting the Bumor number one is also sweet on the nose without the presence of that sherry sweetness it's, it's almost like a, a lemon curd, like a really uh, sugary, sweet lemon. So without the sharpness, like a lemon sweet. Definitely vanilla coming through. And maybe a little bit of icing sugar, but there's also the presence of something a little bit oily there too. Now, for me, I've never really got along with this Bumor 10 and that's a really shocker that was a big shocker for me because the Bumor 12 was one of the first whiskies I truly loved um I think it's amazing so I thought the 10 year would be something quite similar just a little bit maybe younger and fresher a bit more peaty um and actually I, I seem to get more off the nose of the Bumor number one than I do off the 10 year You do um, pick up a little bit more of a similar whiskey to the ten than the number one uh, to the twelve than the number one from the ten. You do get through that classic sherry note, but it's not as strong. It's oaky. It's sherried, but it's also quite nutty as well, which is giving a little bit of a bitter element to the whiskey. And maybe a hint of that, that lemon that I was getting in the, the number one, but a little bit more subdued. Mmm. Wow. So initially, I would say this is quite a creamy whiskey uh, for the number one. A little bit spicy towards the end, but it doesn't last. It's just like a sharp hit of oak and then it fades again. The majority of this is just sweetness. It's smooth. It's citrusy. There's vanilla cream on there. Um, and a little bit of oak. It's actually quite enjoyable. I think that's a very nice whiskey. Oh, it's not too complex. Quite simple, but quite nice as well. Onto the ten year. Hmm. Much more going on on the taste. That little bit of oakiness, but also they share a common note, which is almost like um, an engine oil. 
I wouldn't know what that tastes like, but you can imagine. It's got this very oily, bitter characteristic to both whiskies. The sherry influence is there, but it's not really strong. Certainly not as strong as the colour would suggest. More dessert-like than the number one. Maybe a little bit of that ma maple syrup influencing the taste. Sherry, maple syrup, red fruits. But this overarching oily taste that I actually get on uh, a lot of Campbelltown whiskies. I do find it present in a lot of Bumors. Certainly these two because the sherry influence isn't as strong. I would also say that the the 10 year is a smoother whiskey. They're both very approachable, easy drinking whiskies. Bold at 40% helps with that, but um, there's no sharpness in these whiskies. They're smooth drinking. And that's probably why I like them all so much early on. It was very easy to get into. And then finally, Whereas the number one is more of a lemon curd, a vanilla cream, I would say the 10 year is more of a, a blood orange, maple syrup, rich red fruit, sherry sweetness. So they're very different, but they're also quite similar in their base notes. And um, I think Pomore is a great whiskey. They do great whiskies, and um, I would recommend them to anyone. Which do I prefer? Well, the Bumore Number no. Ten is a special edition whisky. It's a collaboration with Aston Martin, so it's the more expensive of the two. No surprise there. It's also a ten-year age dated whisky instead of a Naz. Um, the Bumore Number no. One actually will hit sales quite often throughout the year. And you can pick this up for around 20 to 23 pounds in the UK. For that price, I think it's well worth buying. I would say it's a bargain at that price. Retail would be maybe around the 30 pound mark, which I think you wouldn't be too disappointed if you bought it for that. But I would wait for a sale on this whiskey. The number 10, I would really like to review this with the Bumore 12 year because the Bumore 12 year is priced cheaper than the 10 year and I would be interested to see which one was better so um, I wouldn't rush out to the shops and buy the 10 year even though it's a very good whiskey um, in this one I would shoot for the number one but if you like sh your sherry um, your peated sherry whiskies then I would maybe even search out for the 12 year but I'll review that at, at a later date so um, the winner today is the Bumore number no. one whiskey. Um, and thank you all for watching the video. If you like the video, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you all for the next whiskey walk.